Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. It's uh, To The Outer Limits, and we're really excited about today's episode. Thanks for joining us live. I want to tell you off the bat, we are going to talk for about 10 or 15 minutes with our guest, Dave Rash, uh, about this amazing new uh, Joseph Stefano book that he has edited of his scripts. But unfortunately, Dominic Stefano is having trouble getting on StreamYard. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk for about 10 or 15 minutes with Dave, and then uh, we're going to go over and record a full conversation with Dave and Dominic and, and present that to you guys as an additional episode. So consider this a bit of a live teaser for a moment and let us welcome Dave Rash to To The Outer Limits. Welcome, Dave. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you taking the time. And uh, I certainly enjoyed all 32 episodes of your show. I watched every one of them. <laughs> oh, wow. You're you're the one. OK, well, great. I, I really appreciate that. But uh, and, but no, thank you for taking the time to come on here. We, we, you know, we're excited. Very excited, Dave. Absolutely. And, and uh, Dave, forgive me. I don't have it handy. Please give us the title of the book. Uh, From the Inner Minds to the Outer Limits Scripts of Joseph Stefano. So the focus on this book is the stories of Joseph Stefano from the Outer Limits Season 1. Which is super exciting. I, I wish that uh, I wish I'd had this book uh, years ago when I first uh, got into the Outer Limits. I mean, uh, it's uh, uh, I mean, the reason I'm uh, a fan of the Outer Limits is Joseph Stefano. I mean, like I, you know, I saw them as a kid. To some extent, but when you know when the DVD set came out, whenever like early two thousands or something, that's when I kind of put it together that Stefano was the same guy who wrote Psycho and you know and sought out the series. And his stamp is so clear once once you you know once you know what it is that, uh, actually, that go ahead. I, I, actually, this is the first time the uh, Stefano family has authorized the publication of his Outer Limits work. So it'll be it'll be the first time for anything that's uh, been officially published. And to get the teleplays to uh, to publish those for the Outer Limits is a real treat. So I agree. And, and there's some interesting developments uh, with some of these. And I think for the first time, Gabriel, if, if you're a casual fan, you may not realize that of 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 your favorite episodes, which ones specifically are written by Joseph Stefano? I think it uh, is interesting when you put them all side by side, and even though Volume One's five hundred pages, uh, eight scripts, it's still not everything. There's still a lot more to go. So, it is, uh, I think, uh, interesting from many aspects. But I agree with you. I'm I'm a lifelong fan, and I'm looking forward to it myself. And. Always, I mean, it's always fascinating, at least to me. I mean, look, I work in movies, I, you know, I, I deal with, you know, uh, working off scripts all the time, but it's still, I think, always fascinating to see the ways that, that things develop between the initial idea and production. And, you know, and also since Stefano was uh, the producer of the show, you know, the both of the, you know, he had enormous input into the production as well. So, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's very much from his mind. So, you know, uh, being able to dig into those will be amazing. It is a unique and definitive look into his uh, teleplays, and you're you're the first line of visuals, uh, the first of of anything television wise is a script. Yeah, and and there is no visual attached to it, so you're usually the first line, so you get a real appreciation for this. I'd be interesting to hear your take on uh, some of these never filmed episodes because you do have that vision. I don't have that vision. You have that vision, so it'd be real interesting to hear your input on that. It's certainly impossible for me to read a script without thinking about how it would be shot, you know, <laughs> like how the scenes would be designed. Uh, and, I mean, to the, to the extent that the scripts that I've read for the show as we've gone along, uh, you know, it, like it's it's always, you know, Stefano has this way of, of writing in uh, a very sort of, you know, aggressively atmospheric way, even in the description, you know, in the action and the descriptions, the stuff that no, you're not going to see on screen. And, you know, and being able to get across those ideas so uh, charismatically just for the for the crew, essentially, for to, mm -hmm. so that people can understand and realize the vision of the script is uh, is, is pretty exciting. And, and certainly a different a little bit different of a thing than than people to, to today where the style of scripts is, is much more terse. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, any any initial thoughts? Well, yeah, I was um, so. Uh, John uh, passed along. One of the things in this book is a, is a very early version of Form of Things Unknown. I believe there's a few draft of Form of Things Unknown in, in the book, but one of the earliest one has a, a bear, a monster in it. And the, it's, 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 uh, it has the same characters, but it's a very, um, you know, where the story goes is totally different. 
but the thing that stood out for me reading that script uh more than the differences of the plot is is just those descriptions and it's the, it's the way in all his his scripts but there the descriptions were so uh delicious to, to honestly the way he the way he describes uh Kasia and Lenora um as as you know one is like this hearted model the, the plaything of the mediterranean set and then this other is like uh, a porcelain beauty who people uh, have to protect but she still uh uh is life's mishaps befall her it's like uh you know gabe has a job where he has to read a lot of screenplays i've had a few jobs where i've had to read a lot of screenplays uh you see the the character descriptions from most writers are very rote uh you see uh, uh the male lead is a devil may care type and the female lead is pretty but she doesn't know it uh we see that so many times and to see uh that much care uh go into the characterization in the descriptions uh is is so wonderful i feel it had to be uh empowering for the actors uh and the casting directors uh that uh it's, it's one of the reasons to check out uh it's one of the reasons why i'm so excited for this book is because i feel like there's this uh rich uh you know honestly literature to uh stefano's writing um that's that that even though we don't uh even though we're not when we're watching an episode we don't see you know those directions we do i feel that um that approach it does shine through in the finished product one of the I, I, real fast, I was going to say uh, the other great thing is really, and I'm looking forward. I hope you do. You guys do do both volumes of this at the very least, because Stefano. I mean, you really he, there. There are the Hitchcock fans that know Stefano. There are Outer Limits fans that know Stefano. But coming of that age of these incredible science fiction and horror writers that were all in the in the zeitgeist at that time, either writing for the Zone or other similar things. Stefano's name should be that right there with Serling and uh, all all of these, you know, Richard Matheson and all these other greats. And that's why it's a great opportunity to have a book like you have, where you could really examine the work. And finally, really, uh, scholars and, and people that are fans can really go beyond what we see on the screen and really appreciate his writing. Well, the major purpose of this of publishing this is is to promote the legacy of Joseph Stefano. I, I think it's a bit underappreciated historically, and I think this. Um, should give it additional exposure to uh, maybe some new markets and some new people and certainly put it into the colleges and universities because to me it's rich prose. I, and I don't, I don't have the experience that you guys have with other films, but the character descriptions, the settings, the scenery, even the rich dialogue is just so precious. And I, it is a piece of literature to me. So I, I think it, it is special. It needs, to be, uh, it needs to be out into the public. It really and, does. And unlike a lot of scripts, it's they're just highly readable because of that. You know, I mean, it's uh, you know, it's 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 less an instruction manual and more a, a kind of holistic, you know, description of, of the, you know, the end product, which is which makes it, you know, very readable. And the forms of things unknown, I think uh, Joseph Stefano was swinging for the fences on that one. So uh... <laughs> I would say so. <laughs> I'm not, I think there are a few instances in TV history where people have have uh, have swung further towards the fences. I know that uh, that's strained and unmade sense, but it's still it's nuts, and he so goes for it. And the and you even you know in this in this early draft, almost especially in this early draft, you just feel the kind of exuberance and the excitement behind getting, you know, getting his ideas out on the page and, you know, and, and making, you know, making this thing. I mean, I think that's everything about what makes the first season of the outer limits. Great. Is that feeling like they're really going for it and they're really, uh, you know, they, you know, they they want to make something good and great and interesting, you know, there's passion there. And that's definitely in the scripts. And it's remarkable. The body of work, um, within season one that Joseph Stefano accomplished because, well, the new Twilight Zones, the, the season one was 10 episodes, season two was 10 episodes. Season one of The Outer Limits was 32 episodes. And let's face it, editing and everything about technology today versus back then, scissors and tape uh, versus digital uh, special <laughs> effects, uh, it's not comparable. So the body of work that what he's accomplished in that short period of time to me is just incredible. Especially and, when you put it all together. It's and as an anthology, as an anthology show, 
not a not a regular set, you know, show that has standing sets and you know we're gonna be in the office today and the squad room tomorrow and all that stuff. And and the, and the um filming schedule as well. My god, j- not just for, even on those shows like Maverick. I always go back to Maverick because James Garner said we had to bring in Jack Kelly to be a second Maverick because we were on a six-day shooting schedule and we couldn't maintain the schedule to you know do all the episodes for the season. So they had to bring in a second crew and Jack Kelly to do it. And think of Stefano and Stevens and company putting on 32 episodes in one year with changing sets and not having yeah, a I, well, and, and yeah. Actors and you know everything. It's they're basically they're basically making thirty-two you know movies. fifty-minute movies. Yeah. You know every every week and a half or whatever. Absolutely. You know? I mean it's 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 the it just sounds punishing and incredible. And it's in just in in that it's not surprising that that you know Stefano wouldn't continue to produce it through uh, the second season just because so much passion is put into it. But I but still you know we we all wish that he had but you know but still it, you know i i uh, uh it, it's just so such an incredible feat to do that much work and have that much of it be so great one one of the things i want to do sometime is put together just his writing contributions because there's a lot of writing contributions he's made that are not credited right. on the on the script covers so one nice and he did keep good records and thankfully i have quite a few of them I'll just use one example for uh, The Mice. Uh, That was a Bill Bellinger story. Uh, They sent feedback back to the author. So I have a second version of The Mice, um, which he rewrote based on that feedback. And then it went in-house, so Lou Morheim took it, and he he made some changes to uh, about a third of the script. And then Joseph Stefano took it home for the weekend in two days, wrote a whole new script, based on everything, the first three. So you get to see this whole transition and realize that, okay, he may not have done the story originally, but he had a very heavy influence on on a lot of the scripts. He tried his best to devote the time necessary to make sure it had his tone and his look and view for an Outer Limits episode. So I would just like to chronologically list all that he wrote for that year. And it would just be an incredible body of work just for what he wrote. But he was the producer, so he had oversight for everything else. Yes, he had Conrad Hall and, and a bunch of other great people to as a supporting cast when it went into production. But still, he was responsible for all that as well, casting everything. So. Yeah, yeah, it's really incredible stuff, and uh, you know, and it and it shows it's there in the work. And and uh, my God, would I love to read all those drafts of the mice, you know, mm-hmm. and, and see how all that evolved. <laughs> I, you know, I'm I'm a total process junkie when it comes to film stuff, well, and everything else. But uh, but like I uh, I would I would absolutely love to to be able to see how that stuff develops. It's just fascinating to see how how you know different people approach stuff and no you know problem. and the the contributions. And as I mean, I think that we've noticed as we've gone through the through the first season, the uh, you know even in in episodes where he was not credited, there are very uh, you know, you can you can kind of feel the Stefano stamp, particularly on the dialogue and a lot of stuff in, in yeah. his, you know, very heightened stylized dialogue, which I absolutely love. And he had time and money and cost constraints and the sensors to deal with. So yeah. there's all yeah. a bunch of other topics that we can discuss. The sensors, I have a lot of funny stories on the sensors that I've learned over the last year and a half. Well, absolutely. That is a great tease. And to remind everybody that we're going to wrap up in a minute or so. And you'll be able to see a more extended interview with Dave and also Dominic Stefano if you uh, are are just tuning in live. I always feel ridiculous saying that because most people are seeing this after it's already been recorded. But uh, it's my broadcast uh, gene kicking in. But um, do join us because, yes, I do want to go into the kind of censorship that clearly uh, they had to face back then. But still kind of the kinky and like really out there ideas that they were able to get get through is pretty amazing because there are times beyond just horror creepy or sci-fi creepy that there really is some kind of like icky human perversity going on sometimes on the other yeah, level. That's, that's why I'm here, John, the icky human perversity. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, and again, that's why on the surface, Dave, and I know you feel this way likely as well as us, that – you know, Outer Limits always is kind of number two to the zone. And it's like, man, you, you really got to take this. They are apples and oranges, even though they're still 
playing in the same sci-fi cold world, uh, cold war world. Right. And yep. it's and it's just a different show. It's made by different yeah. people, and it has a, yep. a very particular tone to it, which was something that uh, you know that has always been exciting and interesting to me. So, uh, do we do we want to uh, wrap up with uh, Dave telling us uh, particulars yeah. about the book or uh, yeah, when it's well, coming yeah. out? How to get it? Yeah, right. For again, yeah, let's let's do that, and then we'll wrap up. So, please, Dave. Yeah, remind people where they can get the book and and everything. Right now, the book is available directly from the publisher. Well, it will be made available directly from the publisher shortly um, at Gauntlet Press. So that's www.gauntletpress.com. There's two editions. There's a fully signed collector's edition. We're lucky to get uh, a few actors to sign uh, the collector's book. We have David Frankham from Don't Open Till Doomsday. Uh, we have three from it uh, crawled out of the woodwork. That is uh, Barbara Luna, Ed Asner, and... Um, Michael Forrest, and we also have David McCollum from The Forms of Things Unknown. I think David wow. McCollum is always asked to sign for um, The Sixth Finger, and I asked him to sign for The Forms of Things Unknown. I think he was surprised, and that spurred a little bit of a conversation. So, Yeah, because, it, because it's awesome. I don't know what David McCollum <laughs> thinks of it, but it's the better of the two episodes. So. <laughs> And actually, I, I, it's a tie. actually, Gabe, that's why I selected this one that we can discuss today because I knew all all of you would enjoy this one. Yeah, so. absolutely, <laughs> no question. All right, and I've I've corrected my spelling of gauntletpress.com, so that's where you can pick up the book right now. And yeah, man, there's there's the uh, signed version and there's the unsigned version, but absolutely worth it. Five hundred pages of Joe Stefano uh, scripting, correct? I mean, that's correct. That's incredible, and it's a great. Uh, door to open into the mind of Joe Stefano. So we're going to continue this conversation in a pre-recorded thing that you will see probably later today. Thank you everyone for watching live and uh, stay tuned for that uh, reproduction. And also the word balloon audio audience will uh, be able to hear our conversation tomorrow as well. So thanks a lot for watching and uh, I'll, uh, I will blast out on social media when the second part of this conversation is put up with Dominic Stefano. So uh, enjoy that. Until then, stay safe, stay happy, and 